In this video, we'll show you how to assemble and debug the Roarm M1. First, assemble the pan tilt from bottom to top. Attach the silver metal flathead screw CM3 times 6 and the silver metal cylindrical spacer M3 times 35 onto the disc-shaped component. Use black metal round head self-tapping screws PA2 times 5 to mount the servo onto the disc-shaped component. After placing a rubber ring on the toothed disc of the servo, mount it onto the servo gear. Attach the silver flat head screws CM3 times 6 with elastic spacers to the servo and fix them. Use a black cup head screw M3 times 10 and silver metal cylindrical spacer M3 times 10 to mount the circular parts to the disc shaped component. Here the installation of the head first came to an end, and next, let's install the chassis. Install the servo cable. Note here that there is an opening in the disc shaped part and the servo cable needs to be placed above the opening. Install the aluminum tubes and ensure there are no gaps between the aluminum tubes and the pan tilt after installation. Install the chassis with black countersunk screws KM3 times 10. Continue to install the pan tilt with silver flathead screws CM3 times 6 to mount the silver metal spacers M3 times 10 onto the illustrated small disc shaped component. Attach the silver flathead screws CM3 asterisk 6 with the elastic washers to secure the small disc shaped component onto the pan tilt. Ensure that after installing the small circular disc, it can rotate smoothly without any obstacles. Install the deep groove ball bearings onto the pan tilt. Fix another small circular disc component on the pan tilt using silver cup head hex screws M3 times 6. Then, attach the disc shaped component used to mount the driver board onto the pan tilt with silver cup head hex screws M3 asterisk 6. Ensure that the arrow on the component aligns with the direction of the servo cable. Do not install incorrectly or you will limit the rotation range of the chassis servo. Install the large robotic arm by securing the synchronous wheel and the large robotic arm using silver flathead screws CM3 times 10. Need to pay attention to the position of the big arm in relation to the timing wheel. Install the positioning component and secure it using silver flathead screws CM3 times 4. Install the flanged bearings F6800ZZ on both sides of the large robotic arm. Secure the large robotic arm using self-locking screws in the following order. The order is pair of lock nuts, side plate assembly, flat bearing F10-18M, timing wheel assembly, flat bearing F10-18M, side plate assembly, elastic spacer, flat head screw CM8 times 16. Fix this assembly tightly. Put the timing belt on the timing wheel, and then attach the robotic arm set to the pan tilt with the black cup head hexagonal screw M3 times 8. Here you do not need to consider the installation angle, because the subsequent can be set for the servo in the center, after the installation is complete, turn the arm to ensure smooth and unobstructed. Attach the servo to the illustrated component using black self-tapping screws PA2 times 5. Then, install the toothed disc using silver cup head hex screws M3 times 6. No rubber rings are needed in this step. Install the robotic arm flanged shaft using black cup head hex screws M3 times 8. Install the small synchronous wheel, ensuring that the screws are tightened in the direction of the flat side of the robotic arm flanged shaft. Install the flange bearing F688ZZ first, then install the flange shaft assembly use silver flathead screws CM3 asterisk 4 to mount the servo assembly onto the robotic arm. After installing the pan tilt and robotic arm, the next step is to install the clamp, fitting the mini flanged bearings onto the clamp. Pay attention to the orientation of the flanged bearings, with the wider side of the flange facing upwards towards the clamp and the narrower side facing downwards away from the clamp. The orientation will be reversed for the other clamp. Continue installing the mini flanged bearings. When installing them on this component, make sure the flanged bearings are facing the same direction. When installing them on the gear component, ensure that the gear is aligned and the component is flush, then install the mini flanged bearings in the same direction. Secure the components using black flathead screws CM3 times 14 and black M3 self-locking nuts. Ensure that the wider side of the flanged bearing faces the surface where the screws are inserted. Install a plain bearing F6-12M between the flanged bearings of the two components. Be cautious not to tighten the screws and nuts too much, allowing the components to rotate smoothly. 
However, they should not be too loose to prevent any slippage on the surface. To reinforce the clamp, pay attention to the diameter of the screw holes on the reinforcement components. Place the reinforcement piece with the shorter diameter below the clamp and the one with the longer diameter above the clamp. Tighten them using black flathead screws CM 3x14. Install the mini flanged bearings with the wider side facing upwards for the one on the left and facing downwards for the one on the right. Use black flathead screws CM 3x14 and M3 self-locking nuts to install the clamp. Ensure that the two gear connecting components are parallel to each other. Install the servo with black self-lock screws PA 2x5. Use silver flathead screws CM 3x6 along with washers for installation. To secure the servo with the toothed disc, use the silver round head screws PM 3x5.5 that come with the servo itself. Install the gear, paying attention to the size of the screw holes in the gear. Use silver round head screws M2 times 8 to attach the small hold gear to the connecting component. Note that the gear has an arrow indicating its direction and the arrow direction should align with the arrow direction on the connecting component's gear. Align the arrows on the two large hold gears and secure them using black flathead screws CM3 times 14 with the elastic washers. After installation, rotate the clamp to ensure smooth and easy movement. Install the servo using black self-tapping screws PA 2x5, ensuring the correct orientation of the servo. After placing the rubber ring, install the servo with the toothed disc. Then, using black cup head hex screws M3 times 10 with washers, mount the servo assembly onto the large robotic arm, ensuring the correct installation direction. Install the black 16mm thick tube clamp using black flathead screws CM3 times 14. Do not tighten them too much. Once the carbon fiber tube is in place, tighten the screws securely. Install the servo with black self-tapping screws PA 2x5. The disc with gears and the disc without gears are mounted on both sides of the servo with rubber rings and mounted on the clamp with silver flathead screws CM 3x6 with spacers. For the toothed disc, use 5 screws, and for the non-toothed disc, use 4 screws. Install the thick tube clamp with black flathead screws CM 3x14. Then, connect the other end of the carbon fiber tube to the robotic arm, ensuring that the two surfaces are aligned. After installation, shake each servo to see if there is a situation where it cannot be shaken or is difficult to be shaken. The robotic arm has been assembled, and next, we will proceed to set the IDs for the servos and power on the driver board. Connect to Wi-Fi, ESP32 underscore DV and password, 12345678 with your phone or computer, use Google Chrome to log into the URL 192.168.4.1 after connecting to Wi-Fi. Once you enter the web page, click on settings in the bottom right corner of the web page to start setting the servo ID. Start from the bottom servo, connect the driver board to the servo with the servo cable, click get ID after connecting. Then select one, set it, and disconnect the servo from the driver board. For the next four servos repeat the steps from bottom to top to set ID 2, 3, 4, and 5 in turn. Note that only one servo can be connected to the driver board each time you set the ID, and you can disconnect the power cable after all settings are completed.
Install the driver board, install the hexagonal brass standoffs M2.5 times 5 plus 6 and the silver colored nuts M2.5 onto the robotic arm. These are used to isolate the driver board from the robotic arm components and prevent short circuits. Then, secure the driver board in place using the silver colored round head screws PM2.5 times 4. Connect the servo wires and connect the servos in series. One of the two servo wires leading one ing from the chassis is connected to the driver board, one is connected to the servo of the pan tilt, and the remaining servos are connected one by one in series with the servo wires upwards. When connecting the two servos on both sides of the carbon fiber tube, you can put the servo cable through the carbon fiber tube, except for the servos of the clamp with the original servo cable, the others are connected with 26mm black servo cable. After connecting the servo in series, turn the servo to see if it will be stuck by the servo cable and cannot turn. The following is the basic key functions on the website. Click the torque underscore off button to turn off the torque lock of the servo, you can turn the servo by hand with power, and the torque underscore off button to turn on the torque lock. After turning off the torque lock, manually rotate each servo to the desired position and save it. Ensure that the arrow on the small disc-shaped component aligns with the arrow on the ring-shaped component. Press set with ID, 1 to set this position to the servo neutral position. Align the holes in the two positioning parts with the holes in the large robotic arm. Press set with ID, 2 and then save the position. Align the positioning holes on the large robotic arm with the positioning holes on the connecting parts. Press set with ID, 3 and then save the position. Align the two connecting parts so that they are level. Press set with ID, 4 and then save the position. Turn the two connecting parts on both sides of the clamp to the same straight line. Press set with ID, 5 and then save the position. The setting is finished, now you can open the torque lock. Next you can use the robot arm. The angle control mode can be used to control the rotation angle of each servo individually. Coordinate control mode can be used to control the position coordinates and tilt angle of the end of the robot arm. This is the assembly tutorial of ROARM M1. For more tutorials and secondary development, please refer to the product's wiki page.